where Cata Libre is one of the fastest growing e-commerce platforms in the entire world. This company has been a wealth creation machine for its long-term investors, but shares are currently down significantly from their all-time highs in 2021. We're happy to take advantage of the discounted share price by doubling up our position in Mercado Libre today. Here's why. Thanks to Common Stock for sponsoring today's video. As of the time is recording, I am a shareholder of Mercado Libre. And I am also a shareholder of Mercado Libre. In fact, it's my largest position. This is a stock that trades under the ticker MELI and has a market cap of about $60 billion. Mercado Libre's mission is to democratize commerce and finance in Latin America. Simple, inspirational, optionable, awesome. Mercado Libre's business is very well diversified, but there are a few key metrics that investors should watch to indicate how well this business is doing. First, let's look at the core e-commerce platform. If you take a look, we can see that the gross merchandise value or the value of all the things sold on the marketplace continues to grow at about a 30% clip year over year. Another metric to watch is the number of items that are shipped via its Mercado Envios platform. This figure recently eclipsed 1 billion total item ships and continues to grow very rapidly. Perhaps the most important part of the growth story right now is Mercado Pago, a payment solution that was originally started to just help grease the wheels of Mercado Libre's e-commerce marketplace. However, that orange section you see there is the number of uses, the amount of money that's been transacted off the Mercado Libre e-commerce platform. And it shows that this is becoming the de facto way to pay for everyday purchases in the countries where it is present. Another interesting business line is the company's credit portfolio. Mercado Libre makes small loans to businesses and consumers to help them transact. While tiny today, this could become a meaningful growth driver for the business over time. Now, a few things have changed since we made our first purchase of Mercado Libre, and one of them is that customer acquisition costs have actually fallen substantially and are fairly low now. Customer demand, we say, is medium because we know that larger macroeconomic factors can weigh on results, and the vast majority of the revenue is recurring in nature. Turning to the moat, we think that Mercado Libre has several working in its favor. First is the network effect. Platform businesses like Mercado Libre naturally have strong network effects that keep consumers coming back for more. That's because consumers naturally want to go to the marketplaces that have the most sellers, and sellers want to go to the marketplaces that have the most consumers. As the top dog in its region, Mercado Libre is rapidly growing both, which is creating a strong network effect that competitors would have a hard time breaking into. But we also believe that Mercado Libre has high switching costs at play too. That's because many of the folks using Mercado Pago were unbanked before the solution came into existence. Now that they're using it, they would be loath to switch to another system since they have so many of their payments attached to this platform. Third, we think that this company has a medium level of low cost production. The company has invested aggressively in its fulfillment network in the countries as it operates, which allows it to provide its goods to its customers at a lower price than competitors. That advantage continues to grow and we think is quite strong today. And we also think that the brand value is very strong for Mercado Libre in the countries where it operates and we give them credit there as well. When combined, we think that Mercado Libre's moat is quite wide today and continues to expand over time. But what about the company's financials? Well, there's a lot to like there. Revenue has grown at a 66% clip over the last few years. Gross margins are middle of the road at 47% and net income recently changed over to positive on a gap basis and is growing. Free cash flow production has been lumpy, but recently it turned positive and clocked in about $1.6 billion. The balance sheet has $1 billion in more cash than debt and returns on capital for this business are medium and could expand over time. But what about management? Well, Mercado Libre was founded over two decades ago by Marcos Galperin and he remains at the helm today as CEO. Employees give Galperin wonderful reviews over on Glassdoor with 94% of employees approving of him as CEO and he continues to maintain more than 8% ownership in this business which makes him a multi-billionaire on paper. What about if we're looking forward? Well, if you want a company that has proven that it has optionality or the ability to roll out new tools and services that customers love, you'd be hard pressed to find a better example than Mercado Libre. Moreover, Mercado Libre and Mercado Pago are the big players right now, but Mercado Credito and Envios could become larger players in the future, and the company also has other services that are at play as well. In terms of operating leverage, the company is not yet fully optimized for profitability given the heavy investment 
investments in his business. We think there's expansion potential there. In terms of addressable market potential, some analysts believe that this figure is worth over a trillion dollars today, of which Mercado Libre has only captured about 1%, and the vast majority of this company's growth has been organic in nature. How has Mercado Libre been as an investment? Well, the answer is amazing. Since its IPO, it's up over 3,700%, and over the last five years, it is also handily beating the S&P 500. It's important to note that while it's only exceeded analyst expectations in two out of the last four quarters, management itself doesn't guide for the quarters ahead, so analysts are really kind of shooting in the dark with this one. The company is not yet focused on returning capital to shareholders given its numerous growth activities, so the company isn't buying back stock, paying down debt, or paying a dividend yet. So what about risks? Well, by far the biggest one is competition. This is a hyper-aggressive and intensive field where a lot of players are fighting for space. Among them, PogSeguro, a payment option in Brazil, C Limited, a multinational e-commerce player, and of course, Amazon. We recently got some good news on that front. C Limited decided to shut down its operation in some Latin American countries, which takes some of the competitive pressure off Mercado Libre. And Mercado Libre's primary competition for e-commerce in Brazil, Americanas SA, is undergoing a little bit of upheaval right now as there has been revelations of financial shenanigans at the firm, and the CEO and CFO have both been let go. However, there are a couple other risks for investors to keep in mind. One of them is that this company's financial statements are very complex given the number of businesses that this company is in. That isn't necessarily a business risk, but it is a risk with analyzing the company's stock. It's also worth noting that there are geopolitical risks that need to be taken into consideration. Mercado Libre operates in a section of the world that isn't unfamiliar to political upheaval. For instance, Venezuela used to be one of the key economies that Mercado Libre counted on, but the company had to exit the country due to political upheaval recently. There are also outside forces that investors need to keep in mind. Chief among them is inflation, which has been raging in certain Latin American countries in recent years. And finally, the stock itself is quite richly valued. We'll have more on that in just a minute. So how'd the company do in its most recent earnings report? The answer there is pretty good. Revenue grew 45% to about $2.7 billion, slightly missing Wall Street's estimate. And earnings per share grew 33% to $2.56, which exceeded Wall Street's estimate. Margins were somewhat of a mixed bag. Importantly, gross margin and operating margin both expanded meaningfully, especially that operating margin, while net margin was down slightly. Free cash flow was up significantly, net income was up as well, and that balance sheet still has that net $1 billion in cash. Management does not issue guidance, but for what it's worth, Wall Street is expecting 38% revenue growth in the upcoming quarter and $2.29 in earnings per share, a big reversal from the $0.75 cent loss per share in the year ago period. And for the full year, which is really just adding in that fourth quarter, analysts expect top line growth of 49% to $10.5 billion, while earnings per share has a huge reversal, more than quadrupling to $8.41 if they meet those expectations. So what will these shareholders be watching moving forward. First, we're going to be keeping an eye on operating margin. We want to see this figure steadily tick higher over time. Second, we're going to keep an eye on total payment volume for Mercado Pago, especially total payment volume off the Mercado Libre e-commerce platform. That's where the growth has been. Third, we're going to watch gross merchandising volume. We want to see this figure steadily tick higher over time. And finally, we want to keep an eye on the credit losses for Mercado Credito. The number of debts outstanding over 90 days has been growing. It's not a problem yet, but we'd like to see it revert back to a safer area. Overall, we think that this company's moat is stable at worst and widening at best, and the thesis for owning this stock is fully on track. We recently ran this company through our investing frameworks, and it continues to score extremely well. On mine, it got a 78, which is well into my investable category. And this is by far the highest score that any company has gotten on my framework with a 16, easily in the anti-fragile territory. But how about valuation? Well, we think that Mercado Libre is somewhere in phase three of the business growth cycle right now. And when we think through the company's income statement, we think that revenue and gross profit are fully optimized, but nothing else is as of yet. Because of that, the metrics that are probably the most worth watching are price to sales and price to gross profit. But we'd also add in that because free cash flow is positive and growing, we can take a peek at price to free cash flow as well. So let's do that. Mercado Libre's price to sales ratio is currently around six, which is historically on the low side for this business. The company's gross profit over the trailing 12 months has gone straight up at about $4.6 billion. If we take the market cap of about $60 billion and divide by that, 
we see a price to gross profit ratio of about 13. That's high on an absolute basis, but not bad for Mercado Libre itself. Mercado Libre's trailing PE ratio isn't all that useful, coming in at over 200, showing that the company isn't yet fully optimized for profits. And we could probably say the same thing about Mercado Libre's forward PE ratio, although it's in a more reasonable range between 70 and 100. Finally, there's the company's price to free cash flow ratio. This figure clocked in at about 37, which is high in absolute terms, but relatively attractive given this company's growth potential. So there you go. That's why we will be adding $250 worth of Mercado Libre to our public portfolio for all to see. If you want to follow along with our portfolio, you can do so on Common Stock, and there's a link in the video description to see all the purchases that we've made so far. Hop on over to Common Stock, see our post, and leave a comment letting us know what you think we might have missed or if you agree with our decision. We'll read through all the comments, and whichever one we select as the most insightful will get a $100 gift from Common Stock. Common Stock will be paying Weston $100, so if you want a chance to win, click the link in the video description, comment on our slides, and let us know your thoughts about buying Mercado Libre today. We hope you found this video to be useful. Brian's out.